Well, good morning, everyone. It's, oh, there's my test marks. I wanted to be sure everything was on the screen. I was having some technical problems. All right, we'll delete those. Um, good morning. I want to use this video to solve some more complex force problems. Um, the culmination of our problems in this video will be exactly what we were doing in lab. Um, so we will have an opportunity to see where that complex formula for the coefficient of friction came from after considering fundamental ideas, let me center myself better, um, dealing with Newton's laws um, and forces and acceleration and calculations therein. So let's start with this problem. We have a box, we know the mass, and we're pulling it up a 30 degree incline. So let's draw a sketch. There is our 30 degree incline. Here is our box. And we are told that the rope is parallel to the incline, right? So there's a box and someone is pulling ugh, on that in order to yank the box up the incline. We know the force of tension. That is the force in the rope. And right now we are told that there is no friction between the box and the surface of the incline. We want to find what the acceleration is. All of my problems that I've written here are all going to be about finding the acceleration. So let's draw a force diagram. We are nothing without our force diagrams. So we have our box here. As a helpful guide, I'm going to put an inclined dashed line to represent the incline. I'm going to do a better job of that and try to make it match my incline a little bit better. Again, this is just something that helps us make sure we're keeping track of the fact that we are on an incline. That looks to match a little better. Now, our forces, we know that we have a downward weight force. So we have the force of gravity on the box, or the weight of the box. We have a tension that is along the incline. So we have the force of tension going up the incline, parallel to uh, the surface of the incline. And then our normal force, remember we call it a normal force because it's perpendicular, normal to the surface. It's the force of contact of the bottom surface on the box. So that's going to be drawn perpendicular to, there we go, perpendicular to the surface, right? So here we have a perpendicular angle. Now, our job is going to be to think about the X direction motion and think about the Y direction motion we can draw, write independent equations for Newton's second law in the x direction and in the y direction. We need to determine what the x direction is. We are always free to choose what direction our positive x direction is. It's typically most useful to choose it in the direction of the acceleration. So here we have positive x going up the incline. This means that our normal force, which is perpendicular to the incline, has a, right, this force here is only in the y direction. This tension force here is only in the x direction. This gravitational force, the weight of the box straight down, is now at an angle. So this weight, for almost all of our inclined plane problems, we will be splitting up our weight into two pieces. We have the force of gravity in the y direction, and then we have the force of gravity in the x direction. And I'll draw that down here, though it's really acting on the box. This helps us um, think about the direction that, uh, or, or rather the, the trig function that we're going to use. As a reminder, any vector we can move around, and if I drew my arrows correctly there, right? This vector is acting on the box, but I'm just transposing it down here so that I can better understand which trig function I'm going to use. The angle of the incline is always the same as this angle here in that little triangle that decomposes the vectors. I'll zoom in on that to make sure we can see that. There we go. So there's our force diagram. Don't pay attention to this. This was a little guide before when I needed to make sure I didn't draw under my picture. There's our force diagram. We have two forces in the y direction, Fn and Fg, y. And then we have two forces in the x direction, the force of tension, Ft, and the x component of the gravitational force, Fgx. 
So let's zoom back out and let's try to see if we can get both that and our equations on our screen. There we go, that should work. So our equations now, in the x direction, the sum of forces in the x direction, or the x component of the net force, would be equal to our positive x force, the force of tension, plus our negative force, right? This force here is in the negative x direction. So I'm going to write minus Fgx, and that's going to equal mass times acceleration in the x direction, right? We're always, what we're doing is we're writing the x and y components of Newton's second law, the net force, the sum of all forces, the net force, is equal to mass times acceleration. We're just writing separately the x component and the y component of this vector equation. Okay. Now, I can simplify this a little bit. I can, um, I can write that in the x direction, ft, and then fgx, if I think about my trig, that's going to be fg times the sine of theta equals max, ft e minus, and then the force of gravity is just mass times gravity, sine of theta, max. Before we go any further, it's a good habit to think about the y direction. So let's think about what's going to happen in the y direction. I'm going to squeeze it in up here because for this problem, it's not going to matter. We'll see why in just a second. In the y direction, the sum of forces in the y direction is going to equal the normal force minus the y component of gravity. And then because we expect this box to simply move up or down on the plane, we expect it to maintain contact with the plane, it slides up the plane, it will not lift off the plane in the y direction. As an example, if this is our incline, uh, let's get some visual aids here, right? Here's our box. We expect it to slide on the incline. Here's the incline at zero degrees. Here's the incline at 30 degrees, right? It's moving up the incline. Remember, our y direction is perpendicular to the incline, so the y direction would be lifting off or plunging through the incline. So therefore, the acceleration in the y direction of the tilted coordinate system is zero. In our regular coordinate system, we're moving up in the plane of the paper, but in our tilted coordinate system, we're moving only in the x direction, a good thing to make sure conceptually we have. Now, um, we see that when we're solving for the acceleration, we did not need in this problem anything about the y direction. So we can use this formula here to solve for the acceleration in the x direction. And I believe when you get that, you get 20.1 meters per second. The solving or the, the numerical crunching is not nearly as important as um, what we'd get how we, how we get there, rather. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit, right, just to make sure we can do this, right? You'd get um, 150 newtons minus the mass is 6 kilograms. The gravity acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 30. And then we would divide by 6 kilograms. That's what we're going to do to get a... And when I did it just now, I got 20.1 meters per second per second. That last step, you can even tell by my mood changing. I don't care about calculating it. I care about, in terms of how you can be successful in this problem, drawing the force diagram, writing these equations based on the arrows that you drew. That is, whenever we do a problem like this, that's what we're going to stress. Let's work another problem. Hey, what do you know? A very similar problem, but now we have friction in our system. So let's see how this changes our problem. Our box is still being pulled up the incline, so I'm going to save some space on my slide here and jump right to the force diagram. So we have this 30-degree incline. I've exaggerated the angle a little bit just to make things a bit more... Uh, clear in terms of what we have. We know we have a downward weight, so this is acting straight downward. We'll call that f of g. 
we have an upward tension force pulling up the incline, not upward as in straight up in the page, but up the incline, the force of tension. And we have our normal force. So, so far this is the same as, I don't like the way that's quite perpendicular. That's a little better. There's our normal force. Now the only force that is in addition to those forces, I'll draw it in just a slightly different color, is now we have a friction force due to this coefficient of kinetic friction. So as we move up the incline, there is a kinetic friction force, FFK, holding back, pulling back on my box, acting as though it were, uh, it wants to slow the box down. It's reducing our acceleration. We should see when we end our calculations here an extra negative term when we evaluate our acceleration that's going to reduce that value to smaller than the 20.1 that we found in the previous problem. We're still moving up the incline, so we still expect our positive x direction to be up the incline. We are going to decompose the weight vector, the gravitational force, into its two pieces, just like we did before. So there's F G Y, and there's F G X. So I have two forces in the negative x direction, whereas in the previous problem, I only had one force in the negative x direction. Let's write our equations. The sum of forces in the x direction I have a positive force, F of T, in the X direction. And I have two negative forces. Before, I only had this, FGX, the component of the weight acting down the incline. And then now I also have the FFK, uh, force of friction that's in the X direction. It's negative, acting against my motion. And that's going to equal mass times the acceleration in the X direction. We know that this force, force of friction, is always mu times the normal force. So I'm going to make that substitution in my next line. Right? This is the definition of the friction force. So I'm going to just, my next line, I'm replacing these things with their, uh, with their expressions. Fgx, that's the force of gravity, mg. The x component, right, this is our angle theta, that's opposite, so I'm going to have mg sine of theta minus mu times the normal force equals max. Now, we don't know what the normal force is. We cannot say that the normal force is equal to the weight. We have to look at the full expression in the y direction. Please don't make any assumptions. The normal force is not always equal to the weight. Let's look at the forces in the y direction and write our expression <clears throat> so that we get it right. The sum of forces in the y direction. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> do a pause and a minor edit. We're just going to, you're just going to have to deal with the slurp. Sorry if you didn't like the sound of that. <laughs> sum of forces in the y direction. We have a positive force, the normal force. We have a negative force, F, G, Y. That's acting in the negative Y direction. That's going to equal mass times acceleration in the Y direction, which is zero. So here, our normal force is equal to the Y component of the weight. And that's equal to the weight, Mg, times the cosine of that angle, right? I just want to express... FGY in terms of the magnitude. FG is equal to mass times gravity. That's the length of this arrow here, this arrow that I'm tracing over in black, the straight downward arrow. I'm finding the Y component, just that little piece of the arrow. Now I know that this is my normal force, and I'm going to substitute this back in here. So let's write this expression now all over again. We'll start over here. We have f of t minus that second term is mg sine of theta. That's the x component of the weight. And now my friction is minus mu times the normal force, which is mg 
cosine of theta. That's going to equal mass times my acceleration in the x direction. I think I got that right before my picture. Putting in all the values that we have, right? We're just going to solve it now. We have 150 newtons. That's our tension force. Minus our mass was 6 kilograms. Mm, yep, 6 kilograms. Times g, which is 9.8. Remember, we already accounted for the direction of gravity being a downward force in our diagram. And then with our choice of coordinate system, we see that the y component is negative y, the x component is negative x. Those minus signs in front of those terms already take care of that here and here. The negativeness of gravity's acceleration, the downwardness, has already been accounted for. Do not substitute in negative 9.8 when you're evaluating. You'll get the wrong answer. So 9.8 times the sine of, it was a 30 degree angle, minus our mu was 0.2. Yep, 0 0.2. I'm just scrolling up to check my values. 0.2 times 6 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. And that equals 6 times the acceleration in the x direction. Chunka, 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 chunka. We evaluate that, and I believe we get a, well, I know we get a smaller value. I believe the value is 18.4. So sure enough, the inclusion of friction in our system has reduced our acceleration because it acts against our motion. Friction is always against the direction of the velocity of the object. So as I accelerate up the incline and my velocities get bigger and bigger, I have a friction force acting down the incline against the direction of the motion. Let's work a problem that's almost like what we did in lab. Uh-oh, my. I froze for a little bit. Hopefully the video is just a short pause and hopefully we don't have any issues. I'm not getting any errors. Oh, it's exciting here on a Friday morning. So, <laughs> here we go. Let's see if we can do it. We have here two boxes connected by a lightweight string that passes over a pulley. One box has a mass of 5 kilograms and rests on a 20-degree incline. So here's our 20-degree incline. Here's box A, and the mass of box A is 5 kilograms. The other box hangs over the side. So they're connected by a pulley. So that pulley is just connected, we'll say, right here to the top of the incline. There's a string that passes over. And then this box here is box B. And the mass of box B is equal to 3.5 kilograms. This box B is free to move vertically up and down. Great. So that means when we release them from rest, this box B is going to fall, and this box A will then be pulled up the incline. You'll have to trust me that I've chosen masses such that that happens. With a certain incline and a certain set of masses, we could picture this sliding down the incline. Um, at this level, it helps to know which way things are going. So I'm going to tell you that I've picked masses, and I've made sure that these boxes are going to slide as the arrows indicate. Again, this is just like what we did in lab, except for this first time, I want to talk about there being no friction between the box and the incline. There's certainly no friction to worry about in case B. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Woo! All right. So um, there is no friction between box B and anything, because box B is not sliding on anything. Again, those of us that had lab, we know that this was our, whoops, our ramp was like this. And box B just fell through the air. There's no friction that we're going to account for as box B falls down. In the next problem we're going to work, we're going to think about this friction here between box A and the surface. Right now, we're going to solve the problem without friction. So we have a few less terms in our equation. Oh, another sneeze is coming. They come in. All right, false alarm. So... <laughs> Let's solve this problem as such. First thing, 
we're going to draw force diagrams. Now we have two objects here, object A and object B. Let's make sure we know why we need to write two, equa two sets of equations, two equations for each box, and have two force diagrams. Let's start by considering box A. Okay, I'm going to go to a new slide, and I'm going to draw a force diagram for box A. Start up here. Here's our incline. Again, I've exaggerated the angle a little bit. Here's box A. It has a tension force up the incline. So there's a force of tension. I want to make sure that that is right along the incline, right? It has a tension force up the incline. There's the force of tension. It has its weight down, F, G, A. And then it has a normal force. Now, so far this looks just like our previous problem because in terms of the forces, it's exactly the same as our previous problem, the first problem we did in this video where a box was being pulled up the incline. That's what's happening here. Notice how I wasn't told my tension force. So when I get to my equations, we can do these probably a little quicker because we've already done something similar. Sum of forces in the x direction, this is our x direction, positive x goes up the incline is going to equal the force of tension minus the x component of FGA, FGAX. Yes, that's right. Three subscripts, three levels deep. Contain your excitement, please. Calm down. I can hear you screaming with joy into your computer or your phone all the way in my house. Let's decompose this vector as a reminder. I have FGY and FGX that make up FGA, ooh, FGAY, FGAX in order to match what I've written already on my formula. Right? Fg for box A, the x component and the y component. Here's our angle theta that's the same angle as our incline. Okay. Our box is going to accelerate, so we're not done with our equation yet. We got a little sidetracked because I forgot to decompose the weight vector. Uh, M A X. Now, I need to be sure that I write a little subscript A here because mass A is what we are considering, right? We are only considering what's happening to box A. If we work just a little bit more, right? We're going to say here's the force of tension. FGA is, uh, we're going to have mass A times G. Now that's the opposite of that angle, sine of theta. E equals mass A times G the acceleration in the x direction. I was not told what my tension is. All right? So this term right here, I have no value for. It would be incorrect to just substitute in the weight of box B. It would be incorrect to say that the tension force is equal to the weight of box B. Why is it not equal to the weight? Well, this is a, a, an issue sometimes because we look at the previous cartoon that we drew and we say box B is the thing pulling me down. Its weight is what's causing me to fall down. Those are true statements, but the tension is not equal to the weight because box B is accelerating. So for completion's sake, before we consider box B, let's write the Y equation. We'll see that we don't need it, but I think it's great practice. We're going to write the equation in the Y direction because other problems, we might need it. We aren't accelerating in the y direction, so it equals to zero. So here the normal force is equal to Fg A times cosine of theta, right? M A times G cosine theta. But we're not going to use that one. We have this expression here, and we're kind of stuck. So let's see what we need to do to solve for the force of tension by considering box B. Let's go and make a box B page. Okay, I had a crash in my writing program. Um, I think I've recreated it, it erased everything. So I've recreated roughly what we had before. We're gonna 
make a new page and consider box B because again what we have the problem here is that we don't know the tension force. So let's look at box B's force diagram. There we go, seems to be acting nicely. For box B, the force diagram would look like this. Here we have box B. Remember box B is falling down and accelerating down when I let go of my system. So I have the weight F G B and I have the tension force pulling up on the box, but the weight is winning. My system is accelerating down. So I have a downward acceleration, therefore I can choose the x direction to be down. Positive x is down. This allows me to make the trivial substitution of a equals a when I am um, solving things regards, with regards to combining the equation that we're going to get here with the equation in the previous slide. So here I only have the x direction. There is no y direction to consider. There's no y forces. There's no acceleration in the y direction in the y direction of this coordinate system that is left right because we are moving down and we're calling that x to make our substitution the same. So in the x direction for box B, we have F G B is positive minus the force of tension and that equals the mass of box B times the acceleration in the x direction. Again, so crucial here is making sure I know which math to put in Newton's second law. The force of gravity here is just mass B times G. There's no sines and cosines because I'm not at an angle. Looking at our diagram again, the downward force is in the downward direction and we're calling that X. Minus F of T is equal to M B A X. So I can solve for the force of tension. And notice how the force of tension is not just equal to the weight, mass times gravity for box B, it's the weight minus the factor m times a. Right? That's what Newton's second law tells me. This statement here is just an algebraic rearrangement of this statement up here. So now I have this relationship that I can substitute back into this relationship. So let's do the following here. Real quick, I'm just going to cut this out. I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to copy it. Copy it. And now I'm going to paste it here. Look at that. Thanks, technology. So this is what we got from box A, right? So from consideration of box A, we have this. And now we know what the force of tension is. So we can write that the force of tension, I'm just making a substitution here for this, mbg minus mba equals m mass, whoop, not equals, minus, pardon me, now I'm at, just rewriting this term above me, minus the mass of a times the acceleration of gravity times the sine of that angle, opposite, yep, that's right, equals ma times AX. Now we just have a little more to do to solve it. So I have MBG. Yep. So my acceleration, I was making sure I had all the right terms. I'm going to do a few algebra steps in one. If you want to practice your algebra, pause the video, see if you get the same thing that I'm about to write. For the acceleration in the X direction, symbolically, I get MBG. Uh, minus m a g sine of theta divided by mass a plus mass b. And I'm going to double check my number because I want to make sure that my number matches because I changed some things right before I recorded the video. So I'm going to pause it to double check the value I'm about to write down. You can pause this video, do the calculations, make the substitutions based on the previous or on the the problem that was worded in the, the previous slide. See if we get the same number together. Okay, and when I calculated it, oh, let me turn my page back up here. I get 2.06 right here. 2.06 meters per second per second. 
I, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but hopefully a few of us will get the point that the problem is more complex. The solution approach is no different. We drew a force diagram. We wrote equations that matched the force diagram and the coordinate system of the problem. From that, we solved, and we did some algebra. And the very last step was we put in values. What we cannot do, and I hesitate to even talk about it, but this is not what we can do. We can't try to jump to this step here and look at this equation. And in the next problem, we're going to make it a little more complex. And I cannot have any success if I jump to that step and try to notice a pattern at that point. It's great that you're trying to find a pattern, but I've already told you what the pattern is. The pattern is Newton's second law. That's it. The pattern is draw a force diagram. That's it. That's what we need to practice. Not, well, in this one, we had this term, and I'm going to add this term or subtract this term or divide by the total mass or just divide by the one mass or what am I solving for? I don't need to look at the last step to find the pattern. The pattern's already established. Force diagram, Newton's second law, solved. Force diagram, Newton's second law, solved. Over and over and over. Let's end with a more complex problem. So here we have... The same setup initially, same boxes, same incline. Uh-oh. Hang on. I am not happy about, I think I forgot to change something. 40 degree incline, 40 degree incline. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Just a second. Okay, I, I think I had an issue with, after that m minor crash a moment ago, it pulled up an older version of the problem. These are the values we should use to calculate what I just said was the acceleration of 2.06 or whatever I got. I think that when I first read the problem, this is what was on the screen. This is what I have a memory of. The 40-degree angle and the smaller mass 2.5 that maybe we, we just saw, um, maybe, is, is, is not right. So I have no way of checking while I'm recording without stopping the recording and having to stitch two files together. Hopefully this is not a big deal, and I'm talking about something that only I noticed. Um, this is the problem that we just solved. The values for the angle are 20 degrees. The values for mass B is 3.5 kilograms. Hopefully that's what we started with when we first started talking about the problem. And the crash just opened up an older version. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same problem, but now we're going to add friction. So notice that all that's changed in this statement of the problem is now there is a coefficient of friction between the box on the incline, slowing it down as it moves up the incline. Not slowing it down. Acting against its motion so that we should see a reduced acceleration. At some point in this analysis, we'll get to an equation that we could solve for mu, which is what we did in lab. This is the exact same scenario as lab. So just as a reminder, we have our incline here. We have box A here. It's connected by a rope to a pulley to box B. Box B is free to drop down. So our system accelerates in this manner. The only thing that we're changing versus the last problem is now we're going to include the friction between box A and the surface. Our force diagrams will be similar, but just a little bit different. Let's start with box A. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm having a good morning. My program just crashed again. Let me pause and pull it back up. And we're back. All right. The crashing only deleted my cartoon. We can therefore just fill in the force diagram here. Let's draw a little dashed line to represent the incline. 
that's interesting. It reduced the size of my stylus. Huh. Um, here's our box A. We have a downward weight, F, G, A. We have a tension force acting up the incline from the string, F of T. We have the normal force acting perpendicular to the plane of the incline. That's the force of the bottom surface pushing up on the box to hold it on the incline. And we have now a friction force, force of friction, and the box is moving, so we have a kinetic friction force. Just as good practice, let's decompose this uh, F of G in X and Y, because we know, let's, let's reiterate here, we know we are accelerating up the incline. So my coordinate system is going to be such that positive X is directed up the incline. Therefore, I'm going to decompose this weight force into two pieces. We have F, oops, F, G, A in the Y direction, and we have F, G, X in the F, G, A, excuse me, in the X direction. F, G, A in the X direction. Let me draw a little bit of a better arrow there. There we go. Okay, now, this angle theta is the same as this angle theta. Okay, so what we can write for our equations in the X direction, now that we have the force diagram, look at the force diagram. Which ones are in the X direction? FT, force of friction, and the X component of my weight. So let's include them in my equation. Force of tension minus FGX, FGAX, pardon me. Again, I know I have another object here, so I've got to include uh, subscripts on whether I'm talking about the force of gravity on A or the force of gravity on B. FFK equals mass of box A times the acceleration in the X direction, right? This is only for box A. Force of tension minus the X component of the weight. That's just the weight, mg, and that's opposite of this angle, so that's sine of theta, so Katoa, minus the force of friction, mu k, times the normal force, f n, equals m a times a x. Now in this equation, there's two things we don't have yet. We don't have the tension force. We're going to find that just like we did in the previous problem by considering the falling mass. And we don't have, right now, the normal force. We need to consider two other equations and make two substitutions in order for this expression to be useful. The first thing we'll get is the normal force by still considering box A. So we always go to the y direction whenever we have friction. The sum of forces in the y direction. I have an upward normal force. Remember, positive y is now perpendicular to my plane. So my normal force is positive. And then I have the weight uh, block A, the Y component. That's going to equal mass times acceleration in the Y direction. But that's going to equal zero because I'm not lifting off the plane or plunging through the plane. Right? The plane is sideways. My box moves along the plane. It doesn't lift off the plane or go through the plane. So I have that my normal force is equal to, right, I'm just going to move this term over to the other side, and Fg is mass of box A times gravity. And then I have the cosine of theta. So that's one thing I'm going to use for my substitution. That's going to go whoop, 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 in there. Force of tension. We have to consider box B. Okay, everyone, say a little wish for me. I'm going to try to go to a new slide. Oh, it's working. Oh, no, I just said it's working around a computer. It heard me. Let's see what it has in store for me now. Box B is falling straight down. It's accelerating on its way down, though. So I have the force of gravity on box B, and I have the tension force up. It's accelerating down. Therefore, my positive x direction is down. Just like before, I now have a Newton's second law statement. Force G, B is positive, minus the force of tension, and that's going to equal the mass of box B 
times the acceleration in the x direction. It does not equal zero because it's not moving at a constant velocity. It's accelerating just like box A is accelerating. They are connected by the string, and the string doesn't stretch or compress. So the distance between those two boxes along the string is the same. However, box B moves, box A has to move. Similar to how the front of your car and the back of your car better have the same acceleration at all times. If one of them is moving at a constant velocity and one of them is accelerating, that's how your car squishes into a smaller car, which is no good, right? These boxes are moving in the same way. When one moves, the other moves. When one accelerates, the other accelerates. So we have to make sure that our Newton's second law statement has mass times acceleration for box B. Force of gravity is mass of B times G minus the force of tension equals mass of B times A. So the force of tension is going to equal MBG whole minus MB times A of the x direction. Now I have this statement, which I can substitute in for the force of tension. So what I'm going to do now is get all of the statements that are useful on one page so we can see where our substitutions are coming from. Again, say a little wish for me. I'm going to add a new page. Oh, I'm nailing it now. So first thing I want to save is I want to save this statement. I'm going to get rid of the highlighting. I might add it in again. So we're just moving some equations around. You have these all in the notes if you're following along. You have these all in your work. So you don't have to do this. You can just relax for a minute while I play around and copy and paste things. Uh -oh. There we go. We're good. So we're going to paste that first one in here. There we go. So this was from, we'll make a note to ourselves. This is from x direction of box A. Similarly, we had, I'm going to rewrite it instead of copying and pasting it. But we had that the normal force was equal to mass A times G times cosine of theta. That was from the Y direction of box A. And then our previous slide here, we have this equation. And that is, of course, by considering box B. So we copy that. We'll paste it in here. This, come on down here. This expression now comes from considering box B. It was the x direction, but there's only one direction. And I'm going to make sure I got that force, normal force, right? MAG cosine theta. Yep. Okay. So now, the reason we did all that work, remember we said we don't have this one. Well, we found it in the y direction. And we said we don't have the tension force. Well, we found that by considering box B. So by making these substitutions, this one goes here, this one goes here, we can write the following expression. Now, it's a little bit of a doozy. If you want to practice uh, at any point, you could have paused and, and worked ahead to see if your algebra is going to match mine. But this is the statement we end with, MB times G minus MB times AX. That's this statement here, or this term here, minus, ooh, this was MA, almost got me, right? This is from box A, so it's good we made that note. This mass here has to be mass A times G times sine of theta minus mu K, the kinetic coefficient of friction, times the normal force, so I have MAG cosine theta equals m a times a x. Woo! Now we have to solve for a x, so we're going to move this term over to both sides, or add that term to both sides, or move it over to the right side. I kind of combine those two algebraic ideas. Only do one of those algebra steps. They're the same thing. m b g minus m a g sine of theta minus mu k m a g cosine of theta equals m a a x plus m b times a x. 
which of course we can simplify to MA plus MB by pulling out that AX term. That leaves me with, so I'll squeeze it in on the bottom here, the acceleration in the X direction. The numerator is going to be this term right here. MBG minus MAG sine of theta minus mu K MAG cosine theta Whew. all over the total mass of my system. MA plus MB. When I calculate that out, I got, how do I do it? Divided by 3.5 plus 5, 0 0.44. Sure enough. I, I just want to be sure that we are making sure that these are two separate ideas. There we go. Sure enough, the acceleration is less because we are not uh, because we have included friction and we aren't going up the incline as quickly because friction is helping to hold us back a little bit. Now, those of us in lab, I mentioned that we're solving the exact same thing that we had in lab. This is our full equation of motion that has all the pieces. You can solve this for mu and you should get the same expression that we had on the board in lab uh, that we put into Excel with our data. We were measuring the acceleration from a tool and using that data to determine what the coefficient of friction was. In this problem, the coefficient of friction is given to us. Okay. If we watched all the way through, I appreciate you uh, looking at some extra problems for your own um, understanding to try to make sure we can see how even though the problems get more complex, we are always doing the same thing, solving for whatever we're asked for by first starting with a force diagram, then applying Newton's second laws for X and Y for every object in the system, and then it's just a game of which substitutions can we make from one object to the other, from one dimension to the other, um, because whenever we apply Newton's second law, we have simultaneously true statements. I hope that that little hiccup in the middle didn't cause any confusion. If it did, please reach out to me um, and let's make sure we can clear it up. I'm going to watch this video through to see if it was a problem or not. Um, hopefully I don't have to re-record it. Wish me luck. Have a good weekend if you're watching this on the weekend. I will see you in class on Monday. Good work, everyone.